Well, I was fortunate to go to Mississippi uh, about a month ago, and on the way back, I stopped at Shiloh Battlefield, which is right on the Tennessee-Mississippi border. Visited there for a while, and as I continued on home, I stopped in Dover, Tennessee, at the Fort Donaldson Battlefield, which is even a little closer to me. And it, as I got home, it made me think about the records we'll be talking about in this webinar, and more importantly, things that are connected to the personal families of those folks who participated. When I was a young man uh, growing up in a town nearby here in Tennessee, the gentleman who lived next door to me was a Mr. Jones, very nice gentleman. And his son, who was grown, and his wife kind of took me in. And I visited with them very often. And I listened to the stories of both of them talking about uh, the grandfather. The altar Mr. Jones, when I was a young man, gave me this Bible, uh, which had belonged, uh, had been given to him by his father. He told me stories about his father. And he also showed me another book at that time that had belonged to his grandfather. And, and when his son passed away, uh, he left this book for me. Now, this was the grandfather of uh, Mr. Jones and the father of the older Mr. Jones. This was his stay book from the Civil War. And he had served in the 30th Tennessee Infantry and had been involved in the battle at Fort Donelson and, in fact, had been captured in that February of 1862 and was about three years in Camp Butler in Illinois. And as I went back and visited and I pulled out this book and I thought, this is pretty close to the time it happened. So let me turn to that moment and read from this day book, which he carried with him on the battlefield that day. It suddenly occurred to me that this all begins very personal very quickly. Friday, February the 14th, the big fight taking place between the gunboats on the river and the battery at Fort Donaldson. Two days later, in his own handwriting, Fort Donaldson was surrendered in the morning. Monday, February the 17th, we were marched onto the boat about 9 o'clock p.m. No entries for a few days, but on Saturday, February the 22nd, it says, we got to Camp Butler in the morning. Now, he doesn't say much in the few days, and I'm sure that they were arranging them at Camp Butler. His very next entry is in March, Tuesday, March the 4th. Robert O. Bigby departed this life at 8 hours, 8 o'clock in the morning. Suddenly, as I looked up that information, this day book was there on that day. This day book recorded for the next two years the sickness of those men and those who departed this life in that simple way. Join me as we learn more about these types of records and many more as we look at step-by-step -step finding your Confederate ancestors and their records. I think we'll find some very personal records in our search.